Norska has, on average, probably some of the fastest battles in Total War Warhammer 2, and a lot of that is because they just don't have very many tanky units. They hit hard, they hit fast, and they either win or lose in a fairly short amount of time. Rotter Champions, though, do offer them at least one option in terms of infantry that can tank reasonably well, and here today... Uh, we've got uh, Katam versus Butcherbird and Norska into Greenskins, which is potentially a tough matchup for Norska. A very tall build here, literally quite tall. We've got two Mammoths, which are like the tallest unit model in the game. Uh, Wolfric the Wanderer here with a War Shrine, two Marauder Champions, and Berserkers in the center. Mist Stalkers, Regiment of Renowned Famir, a Werekin, Belfin Lorifier, and the Beast of Tashnar for at least a token amount of mobility. As for the green skins, we've got Skarsnik, Orc Shaman, uh, Ragnarok Spider, Orc Arrow Boys, Orc Boys, and some Night Goblins out on the flanks here. Squig Hoppers, interesting choice against Norska. Uh, I'm not 100% on that one. Uh, Bertrand Bird, if you let me know in the comments, if you watch, end up watching this, why you actually take the Squig Hoppers against Norska, because they don't really have armored infantry, although Rotter Champions are kind of their armored infantry. Right back to them, 80 armor is really good for Norska, actually. It's not that good overall, but 53 melee defense actually is pretty solid. 39 weapon strength is pretty good. It's not amazing, but it's definitely decent. 20 charge, not too bad. Also, for kind of a defensive type infantry, 35 speed, also among the faster kind of defensive uh, type infantries. But yeah, the just in a build like this, where you need some kind of infantry support, it's not going to immediately die to everything. Now, they are pretty solid. Again, they won't trade great against Black Orcs with Wah, obviously, but Black Orcs just baseline their attacks not that high, so these guys can actually grind with them for a decent amount of time, at least until those buffs pop off. But the Mammoth Assault comes in immediately and just breaks two units of Orc Boys here. We've got multiple Wind Spells going through the back line, just big old Burning Head, uh, Boat, just all of the, the rough stuff here. This Cavalry a little bit too spaced out here with the Spider. Like, not just, just not quite in a position, and the, the rush here, just heavy frontline attack from Norska, ends up breaking these kind of lower tier greenskin infantry units pretty quickly. The Dryad River Troll Hag also getting surrounded here by the Miststalkers and the Werekin. Rough stuff, uh, the Werekin does get the Mither it looks like, but Fighter Die also being popped for Norska, kind of juices up the attack here, up to 54 attack, Marauder Champions, well balanced. This one actually eats some Fanatics, which does showcase... I mean, AD armor is pretty good, but still, against the Regiment of Renowned Fanatics, they take a lot of damage from that, so that's pretty rough for that unit in particular. But in this kind of death blob here in the center, the terror ends up being very real. Greenskin's now kind of blobbing in with everything, uh, supporting all with all these various units, just that the leadership issue will become a pretty serious issue. Uh, Skarsnik also just gets absolutely rammed by a mammoth, uh, tries to use... His debuffs on Wolfric the Wanderer, but just gets canned in the meantime. Um, but yeah, the uh, champions continuing to hold out. We'll see. Greenskins not looking great already. And this is what I mean in terms of their games going fast one way or the other. Um, I mean, Norska, you'll either win or lose pretty quickly. We're about three minutes in, a little over three minutes in. This game's already looking pretty rough for the Greenskins. The Shyman now shatters. They've still got the, uh, the Ragnarok Spider alive, but... It's got a lot of targets to potentially face down, and, uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of infantry to begin with with Norska. Berserkers are now chasing over there, just keeping all of these units routed somehow. But this one unit of champs still holding in the center, trading very well into these Orc boys. The Spider Riders also charging in, but uh, they just provide the extra bodies for the Mammoths to fight on top of, so that the Mammoths aren't taking the full amount of all the damage from the different, uh, you know, kind of low tier, excuse me, stuff here. See some Orc Air Boys shooting in, trying to recover this, but just a wild one. The Squig Hopper is also pulling up and around here. They're going to rally and come back and maybe get on these champions over here, but still kind of charging through the back of their own uh, Orc Boys. They don't get the, the best charge. Wa is popped finally in the late game, but man, look at this. The Regiment of Renown Famir also. Regiment of Renown <laughs> Famir, rather. Uh, just... Uh, matching up very well against the Arachnorok Spider there. Obviously, once it gets the Waproc, it will hit a little bit harder, more consistently. Wolfric also potentially overextending here into the line of archers, letting the Greenskins perhaps back into the game. But the Skinwolf Werken obviously can keep regenerating here. There's still this other Mammoth, more or less full HP, kind of uh, like a little over three quarters perhaps. 
And the champs now fighting the spider. The spider, 59 attack, can definitely get some hits in. One of the things though is, uh, like, defensive infantry actually fights monsters okay. Like, obviously halberds are meant to, but even, uh, like, higher tier shielded infantry, uh, like sword and shield infantry, or hand weapon and shield, in this case, <laughs> axe and shield, uh, you know, stuff like chosen with shields, even to a degree storm vermin with sword and shield, although they're a little bit of a different case. Uh, they actually, uh, like in a situation like this, with the armor sundering from the Famir, they're supporting the Famir just exceptionally in this engagement. And together they can fight just fine against that spider. End up getting the route there. The big old Squig Hopper collapse comes back, and credit to a Butcher Bird for keeping this game alive, considering how hard he got crumped on that initial phase. But finally, hitting army losses. Just too much, and a very wild build from Katam. Normally I say wide builds are better, but very tall here, just, you know, full-on Empire State building falling over. <laughs> Ends up being enough, and uh, Butcher Bird, again, uh, the Squig Hoppers are an interesting one. They actually come back in the late game and almost pay for themselves, but not sure about that pick in this particular matchup. I guess they're to go after Berserkers or something? I don't know, let us know, Butcher Bird, but interesting build nonetheless. Uh, the champs here, 115 kills, end up paying for themselves. The other ones, they got a little bit of a rough time against the uh, the fanatics there, but they en ended up holding, at least, and helping out there. Berserkers also kind of popping off. The Femir Miststalkers get some pretty good value. Both Mammoths get some pretty solid value. Doggos do as well. Femir yeah, Bale Fiend of Fire, some good roasts on those burning heads. And just an interesting game for Butcher Bird, kind of, I don't think he was necessarily expecting a build like this, but just that heavy, heavy center push, immediately breaking some of these Orc boys, uh, led to, you know, kind of defensive position collapsing a little bit, slightly out of position with the Squig Hoppers, means that they're not able to counteract, you know, fully in time, and ends up kind of steamrolling from there. But in terms of uh, kind of defensive infantry, like higher tier, there's not that many higher tier shielded infantry to compare to. There's a few, but definitely champs are... They're an interesting case, because when you look at the stats, it's, again, might not seem all that great, but there's a few things to consider. Uh, number one is that they do have this Enrage, which will give them a little bit more melee attack, right? Uh, plus five melee attack in the higher, higher tiers, but physical resistance as well, 11%. It's not a ton, but it is something. And considering they're the tankiest of any infantry for Norska, they're the most likely to be actually get this up to stage 3. Um, and actually be able to take advantage of the full benefits of it, so there is that. Uh, chosen with shields are definitely better. Uh, 250 points more, you would expect them to be just clearly heads and, and shoulders above, and they are. The one thing champs have going for them is they're a little bit faster, but... Just less HP, less armor. They do have a few more unit models as well. And, uh, you know, of course, that uh, Enrage which does help equal out the leadership difference somewhat. Plus a leadership, yeah. Does uh, not quite fully kind of negate that, but pretty close. Um, the, the stats differential is, is definitely there, and especially the armor and the weapon strength. And, I mean, just everything, right? The stats and everything else. If we look at AP here, 30 and 9 versus the Chosen's... Um, 34 and 14, so just more of everything, and especially AP, plus 5 AP damage. It's pretty pretty considerable difference. Um, so, I mean, Chosen with the Shields are absolutely better, but you would expect them to be at 250 points more. Marauder Champions kind of straddle the line sort of between mid-tier and higher-tier infantry. Same ones in terms of similar cost, and actually, when you look at it on paper, similar kind of factional role, given that Skaven and Norska both mostly low-armor infantry, besides one key unit, which is champs in the case of uh, the Norskins and Storm Vermin in the case of Skaven. So Storm Vermin, quite a few more unit models, but actually slightly more melee attack, which surprises me. Uh, definitely way less melee defense, uh, 10 more armor, less leadership. Uh, they're faster, but uh, obviously they don't have the Enrage. Less charge, less weapon strength, so they are fairly comparable units, and both of them in a similar role. Like, if you want a solid backbone unit that will be able to actually fight in some grind engagements, will beat potentially lower tier infantry of an opponent's faction if they bring quite a bit of that, and also provide kind of an anchor for monstrous units to fight on top of, both of these units kind of fulfill that role relatively well. So, 
uh, yeah, hopefully you learned something today. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button every time I upload a new video. You'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.